Why, hello there. My name is Mountain, and today I'd like to talk to you about this. And what is this, you might ask? Well, this is the Evergood Civic Half Zip 22, or Cheesy 22, as it's known. As the name suggests, it is a half zip, which means this top half of the bag opens up and kind of loads from the top. Civic, or urban city intended use bag, manufactured by Evergoods, the Bozeman, Montana, based manufacturer of some of my favorite bags in the market these days. And when I say some of my favorite bags, I mean I think that I own every single bag they've ever made. Now, amidst such heady company, how does the Civic Half Zip compare? Well, its main claim to fame is probably that it's a very simple and straightforward bag that is very well executed in most respects. Its simplicity and excellent construction also make it a very versatile bag from daily urban or civic use to minimalist one bag travel to even kind of an outdoor pack for day hikes and such, this bag is quite versatile. On the other hand, its main claim to infamy might be this very weird looking duck bill protruding area up at the top. Besides looking really ugly when the bag is not fully packed out, it can also be a bit inconvenient in that it simply makes it harder to close the bag and access the interior contents due to the way that it kind of hangs down. Initially, because it is a simple bag, it does lack somewhat in internal organization, depending on how much of like a pouch person versus a pocket for everything kind of person you are. At the time of this video, the Civic Half Zip 22 is available in three colorways. The standard black one here, khaki, and a limited edition ultra bright signal blue edition. There's also a larger 26 liter version that was released last year. I have that right here. Um, and it has some minor internal differences, but really it's just a slightly larger version of this bag. So the summary on this bag is that it is a straightforward, simple pack that is superbly executed in a lot of ways. And when I say that, I mean it's a really top-notch materials like we've come to expect from Evergoods. Very like well done side dual water bottle pockets. Surprisingly large capacity due to the fact that it's all kind of this main central, central volume in here. And once you get past the weird duck bill, it actually really opens up. And it has a surprisingly strong crossover appeal that lets it really capably handle city, travel, and outdoor adventures, kind of all in one bag. And then it also stands up on its own, depending on how it's loaded out. And it has, as I mentioned, um, or not as I mentioned, but as all Evergoods bags have, like a really great suspension system that makes it ride really high and tight against your back. Now, there's a couple of downsides to this bag in that the material collects a lot of pet hair. Um, the duck bill, as I mentioned, is probably the worst thing about this bag. And it doesn't have a ton of internal organization on the inside. And it has a bit of a choke point, which I'll talk about a little bit more here in a while. And finally, also the um, yoke pocket here can actually make accessing the back laptop compartment harder than really it should be. So in terms of who this bag is for and who it's not for, well, first of all, who it's for is probably for urban carry enthusiasts or students looking to carry a bunch of chunky things. The large one main volume means it can swallow up a bunch of things, including like textbooks, I guess, um, if you know, you're still carrying paper textbooks, still handling a laptop, and the fact that it stands up on its own makes it pretty handy for like dipping into a coffee shop and doing some work. It's also good for minimalist one bag travelers. I actually have this bag packed out right now, just as I had it from a recent uh, short trip that I did with it. So you're gonna be able to see kind of how I have, you know, the loadout for minimal travel. It's also a great bag for like my hydro homies out there. These dual water bottle pockets are very, very nice. Really kind of low profile, but good stretch material and they can take up to like a one liter water bottle. And finally, I think this is a great bag for crossover folks. As I mentioned, this bag excels. It can be a minimalist Goldilocks bag, which is say a bag that you can one bag travel with and kind of use as your EDC bag at the destination. And because it is very rugged and it does have like a great kind of like simple capacity and just enough organization, you can actually use this, oh sorry, plus really good um, suspension. You can also use this for like outdoor day hikes and such. In terms of who it's not for, well, it's not gonna be a good bag for the hyper-organized people here. There's really just like one uh, yoke pocket in the back here, excuse me, one yoke pocket in the back here, and then the one internal pocket on the front here, and then just these two side water bottle pockets. So not a lot of like internal organization here. People with pets, this material tends to pick up dust and, and pet hair and fuzz quite easily. So if you've got a bunch of pets in around the house, this is probably not gonna be the best bag for you or else you're gonna have to get one of those lint rollers to kind of take everything off periodically. Um, also like gym rats. So I have 
surprisingly found it hard to fit like gym clothes and like a normal EDC loadout in here, even though this bag is kind of ostensibly large enough for that. And it's due to this odd choke point that I've kind of referenced a couple of times here. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, especially if you're carrying bulkier gym equipment, like gloves and change of clothes and a big water bottle, maybe a stretch pole, whatever this bag probably isn't gonna be the best orientation for that. And finally, um, maybe for business folks, it obviously can work in a professional environment, but if you're carrying like a lot of business papers, uh, I was like semi-professional environment, but if you're carrying like a lot of business papers, this bag actually does not have a great way of carrying lots of electronic devices other than just throwing them in this big, you know, central compartment and business papers, such like that. So next, let's talk about the Civic Half Zip 22, which is the one I've got here, versus the 26 liter version, which I have here. So TLDR on this is basically the 26 liter is just about three centimeters or so um, wider, taller, longer in each dimension than the 22 liter. And other than that, um, it's really very similar, except for one minor difference, which is on the inside of the 26 liter, which is what I have here, versus the 22 liter, so 22, 26, you can see that the 26 liter has an additional pocket here um, underneath this interior pocket, which this one does not, just a bare panel. This one has an extra kind of mesh pocket, which has a little bit of dimension, and bizarrely, it opens on the bottom, which makes this pocket really, really hard to find a use for. Glad it has its own dimension, but it's really weird that it opens on the bottom and that just means like, you know, I think the idea is like when you flip the pocket down, or the lid down, you're supposed to be able to load it in here, then zip it up. Um, but I guess that means you have to fold it down all the way, which I don't usually find myself doing with this bag more often than not. You know, I'll find myself sort of just cracking the top of the bag and wanting to reach into here, which you can't do because the zippers on the bottom, so you have to fully unzip the bag, let it flop down, then unzip it. Anyway, um, you get the point. It does have an extra pocket in here. It's about, you know, three centimeters, maybe about an inch for my US folks um, in every dimension. Curiously, um, I found that it wasn't much larger in practical terms for my use cases than the 22 liters, the 26 to 22. What I mean is this bag, as I mentioned a couple times, has very good capacity, much more than I was expecting. And this one, while it is slightly larger, actually isn't that much larger that I could fit a meaningfully more stuff in here than I could in here. In other words, usually for like minimalist travel, you know, I can get away with like a 22, you know, liter type of bag. And then when I'm going for like a more extended travel, I usually jump up to around 28 and 30. And I found that what I could fit in like 28 and 30 liter bags um, of other manufacturers, I couldn't get them in here. But then this bag is already big enough for, is larger than most 22 liter bags. So this one kind of just fell in this weird in-between zone, which for me, I just didn't find as practical, which is why this one hasn't really gotten, hasn't been used as much, but it might be something to consider. A reason why you might want to consider getting this bag is if you have a longer torso, this bag is slightly longer in the back, so it's going to fit better for you. And some people have mentioned that with this kind of the latest release, the 2020 releases of the Evergoods bags, like it was sort of hitting their back, their lower back in a strange way. I've never had that problem with the 22 liter. I did feel like this one was a little bit, you know, I, when you wear it high and tight like they're supposed to, it's not much of an issue, but, I, I, well, sorry, it usually hasn't been much of an issue for me. But a lot of people have been mentioning that this bag and then the new CPL 24 V2 and 28 have been hitting their lower backs in an odd way. So something to consider. Then again, if these bags have been too small for you, uh, the 22 liter, then maybe this one might be a better choice. And that's really kind of the difference between the 22 and the 26 is that pocket and the slightly larger dimension. So anyway, with that having been said, let's get into the exterior of this bag. Um, so, you know, no surprises here, high tenacity, nylon with DWR coating. That's the same stuff that Evergoods makes all their bags out of. It's a really, a really solid, great, robust material. I like that this bag, its appearance is very understated overall while still like being very well executed. Again, with the exception of the duck bill in terms of construction, you know, build quality, etc., material choice, whatever. Like this is, you know, like an example of, I think how to make like a really good straightforward pack except for this thing. Um, 
It does collect pet hair though. I've noticed the Evergoods bags have gotten progressively better at kind of resisting that throughout subsequent iterations. So this one is not as bad, but it does collect some. Um, it stands up on its own, as you can see, almost always. And that's just due to the wider base and the fact that a lot of the weight kind of lays at the bottom there. It has an overall pretty slim, narrow design. You can see there is a slight kind of like, you know, V, slight expansion at the top. Overall, I found that this is a pretty slim profile, especially when it's packed up and it rides really high and tight on the back there. Now, the main noticeable exterior detail is this weird duck bill. It looks so ugly, it looks so terrible. It just ruins a lot of the, everything else that's kind of good about the exterior of this bag for me, this weird duck bill. And there are ways where you can minimize the duck bill effect, like if you really pack out the bag, and then there are ways in which it unfortunately gets accentuated, which is that the back is less empty, or is more empty. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute here. Um, next, really, um, let's talk about some of the exterior, I guess, like pockets of this bag. Um, so there's not really that many exterior pockets to this bag. There's these two side water bottle pockets, and they're, you know, made of this really strong, robust mesh that Evergoods uses on the rest of their bags. It has these two drain holes in the corner so that, you know, dust and debris can get out. And it's just doubled over with a single elastic strap at the top. And it very comfortably fits any kind of normal water bottle you might have. So we just grab, uh, I don't know how much this one is. This is a, it says 18 ounce purest water bottle, no problem. You can slip in there. And because it is mesh, it kind of expands out and holds it pretty tightly. Um, even though I have the, the bag quite fully packed out right now, it can still kind of expand out. Obviously, if the bag is less packed out, it kind of intrudes in a little bit of the space there. Um, and I find them very useful because like you can also put things like, you know, USB batteries or something in the bottom there. And this top strap will help retain it, keep it from falling out. Two on each side there. Um, looking at the top of the bag. There's another exterior pocket, which is this yoke pocket up at the top here. And I like this feature of the yoke pocket. It's been, it was originally in a couple of their bags, like the Mountain Quick Draw 24, and I think the CTV um, Civic Travel Bag 40. Um, and then in some of the V2 generations, like the um, Civic Panel Loader V2s. And I'm really glad that they've got that here inside of this, um, you know, a half zip here. And inside of here, you have bright red, um, Evergoods key leash, and then you've got, I've got in there obviously my keys, and then I've got a wallet, Bellroy Apex wallet, and then I've got my phone, Sony Xperia, and then um, just a coin pouch. And what I really like about this pocket is it's super easy just to kind of, it's a dump pocket, right? So it's really easy to just throw things in. It's easy to see them, like if you got the, if you drop the bag down, easy to kind of you know unzip it get in there, get what you need, dump it in and out. And um, for me, like, oh, sorry, and finally it has like a nice contrasting gray um, interior lining, which makes it very easy to see what you have in there. For me, I find this pocket super useful. Now the downside, not the downside, but maybe one thing I wish that this bag had that it doesn't have is like one more exterior pocket on the outside, like a front zipper pocket. Like you, again, you see like on the MPL or on the Civic Panel Loader, 24, etc. Um, because there's just, um, I think there's just not quite enough exterior access on this bag, given the lack of interior access, interior organization on this bag, which we'll talk about here. Because you really find yourself sort of overloading everything in this top dump pouch, because that's the only kind of right, top top yoke dump pouch. Is the only real option you have other than sticking some things inside of these water bottle pockets. Anyway, um, next let's talk about the straps on this bag. So the straps are the classic Evergoods uh, shoulder bag, shoulder straps. Um, and this is a very similar kind of construction and style as they use in all of their bags. And it works really great on this bag, especially for its profile. So it's got a, it's the same material as the body face fabric of, of the rest of, of, of the bag. And it has a fairly thick and dense um, foam inside of it that's quite comfortable, I think, under even moderately heavy loads for me. Um, I've been using this bag for quite a while and it's not breaking down or anything like that. And I haven't had that problem with any of the Evergoods bags, including ones that I've used even longer than this bag. Um, you will notice that it has like the classic, maybe famous, I guess, at this point, kind of yoke, Evergoods yoke, where it kind of like fills in that space between your shoulder blades 
and the bag strap and kind of makes the bag hug your back, your back. Um, and then that's where a, again, the yoke pocket that I just showed you runs across the top here, but then also like it lets you, um, really wear the bag and almost requires that you wear the bag high and tight on your back, which makes it quite stable for things. Like again, when I was saying like you're using this bag for outdoor use or something like that, um, scrambling up rocks, etc. Like it really is a nice tight load. I like that about this bag. Um, the straps themselves, you may notice have these two um, kind of uh, holes there. That's for you to run a hydration bladder through and into the interior of the pocket, which I'll show you uh, in a minute here. Then we have sternum straps. This is again, the same classic sternum strap design that Evergoods uses for all of their um, bags. Generally, I like this sternum strap in terms of like it's simple, functional, robust, gets the job done, very adjustable. What I don't like is the push through type toggles on this one. I've actually, you can already see actually, I didn't even intend to do that. You can see how it kind of is possible for it to kind of catch on there and almost pull out depending on, you know, the angle in which it hits it. Um, I wish they had used something just a little bit more um, secure. So not on this one, but on the Civic Panel Loader 24 V1, which I've had for a long time and use quite a lot in daily um, life. I've had one of these actually come all the way out on a train and I thank goodness I saw it before it fell off and I would have lost it forever. So my one kind of gripe, I guess, about th this shoulder system would be that part here. The rest of it's straightforward. Um, you know, fairly, you know, there's, there's definitely a curve to it, but I find that it actually works well. I don't usually like aggressively narrowing shoulder straps because I can find they dig in a little bit, but on this one, I think partially due to the stiffness of the foam, it actually works out fairly well. And I didn't find this, um, painful or intrusive or uncomfortable, I should say. And rather when, you know, I had this up high and tight and I had the sternum strap locked in and strapped in, it really locked this bag onto my back. And I enjoyed like the stability and kind of like agility that I could get as a result of that. Um, when we flip these shoulder straps back, you can see the back panel is just a straight flat. Well, it has some curve actually, not straight flat, but it has some curve on it. And I'll talk about this curve when I refer to the laptop compartment inside here. The point of this curve though is it allows the bag to, as I said, kind of ride high and tight and shape to your shoulders while still allowing the interior laptop, which I'll show you here, here, this is a 13 inch, but if it were a bit taller, that can still stay straight while the top of the bag contours to your back. So a nice feature of a lot of Evergoods or all the Evergoods bags, I believe, um, except for maybe like the MPL uh, 30 or something like that, um, which has like an aluminum stay. Um, and, and there's stiffness, but enough flexibility to the frame sheet that, you know, it allows it to support the load while still kind of riding, you know, high on your back, kind of curving. Now this is very flat as you can see, and then there's nothing fancy, no air channels, no mesh or anything. It's just the same face fabric as the rest of the bag. So you will get a little bit sweaty here. I mean, I, my general philosophy is that you'll get sweaty with all bags, but you know, for some people like air channels or robust mesh, etc. none of that on here. The material will absorb, you know, a little bit of sweat. Um, so it's not like, you know, Dyneema or something plastic where like there's no sweat absorption. Um, and then there's a bit of like dense foam, maybe slightly thinner than the one on the shoulder straps here on the back. And then an additional kind of bias cut reinforced double layer here. Or I don't know if it's double layer, but bias cut, um, you know, strip at the bottom where it kind of like rubs against your lower back or hits your belt or whatever, or can get a lot of abrasion there. The only other kind of strap on this bag is the top handle. And this top handle is again constructed like a lot of Evergoods bags, which is it's the same kind of, you know, nylon, high tenacity nylon, fo um, folded over. There's a plastic kind of reinforcement piece in there that gives it, you know, structure, um, bar stitched here. And it's fine. Like it's a little bit thin, though it is coated with that, you know, that nylon. So what happens is, you know, you can easily grab it and haul it around. Like it's a good height, I think, for manipulating the bag or hauling it out of the passenger well of a car or moving it from point to point. Um, there are no, there's no additional side strap here. So usually I'd like to have one on the side or side handle here and one here so I can like manipulate the bag this way. Usually I'll just grab the water bottle pocket when, when doing that. Um, but it is because it's a little bit thin, I wouldn't want to carry the bag for an extended period of time with this top strap. Last thing you'll notice is there's these two kind of loops on either end at the top. 
Um, Evergoods does that on, I think, all their bags. The idea of being you can carabine or something onto here or run, you know, whatever, clip something to here. I don't usually use these anymore, though I did used to put like a hero clip or something through them. In the end, I found I just wasn't using that enough to justify having that, you know, swing back and forth, uh, hit my shoulder when I'm, you know, using the bag. I like kind of that this is very low profile, very simple. Like you don't really notice it too much, um, which is how I feel that, you know, bags should be when it comes to their, their, their exterior top handles and side handles, but it's there and easy to grab when you need it. Now on this bag, again, this unfortunate, sad duck bill, I think also takes all of the eyes attention. So nobody's really looking at the handle or wondering what's going on with the top of your bag. So with that having been said, now let's turn our attention to the inside of this bag. So when it comes time to accessing this pack, you'll notice like the, the zippers are all these YKK reverse coil, rack and coil zippers, nice metal zipper pulls with um, this very simple like, um, not paracord, but just like a nylon, I don't know what it is, so like a, a fabric strap with a simple knot on there. They do this for all of their bags and I really love them. Like they're so simple, they're very quiet for the most part, obviously the metal part will hit against each other. Um, they don't have like the big stiff paracord heat shrinking thing. Um, and they've never come loose on me. Now, accessing this pack is quite easy, generally speaking. However, closing the pack is a different story. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Now it's a dual zipper on the main compartment, although the top yoke only has a one-way zipper. Now, when you want to open the bag, because they're very smooth, you know, zippers, it's actually quite easy. And I'm kind of, just to make it clear, I'm using two hands right now to kind of just take it and then rip it open. And I like this about Evergoods in that they have, their zippers have very good rippability, which reminds me of like Mystery Ranch, which is also like a very nice rippable type of bag construction, zipper construction with a tri-zip and stuff. The difference is with Evergoods, I feel like it's pleasantly rippable. Whereas with Mystery Ranch, I always feel like I'm like, fighting against the bag. You never feel like you're gonna rip or break the bag, but you're really fighting against friction. That's usually, I think, because they're coated zippers. I don't know, not always, but. Um, whereas this one, it's just a very, very smooth, rippable zipper. Feels robust, but no problem to rip it open. Now the challenge comes, and this is where we're gonna start talking about this sad duck bill here, is when you wanna zip the bag back up, let's say with one hand, you can see already it's actually not gonna come. So let's take a hand here and already it's not gonna come. And the reason why it's not coming up here, let's see if this one will go, it's not. And the reason why is because this big duck bill where carry is intended to carry some weight, it's the only interior organization pocket, basically flops the bag around such that it creates this joint that you can't force your weight up through. You have to kind of lift the duck bill up a little bit to kind of straighten the zipper path like this. And then you can zip up the bag. Same thing here, zip it, raise it up a little bit and go like this. Now it's not always like that, right? Um, if you don't zip the bag down so much that the, that the duck bill forms that full 90 degree flap, you can obviously pull it up like this. So I find myself always having to be a little bit careful when I'm opening the bag, trying not to let the duck bill flop all the way. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna have this kind of snagging friction. Um, sometimes it's a little bit better if you just, because it is pretty robust material, sometimes I'll just, you know, grab both zippers and then just pull it up like this. But you can already see that when it comes to like, you know, let's say you're, you're walking, you need to grab something out of your bag, you rip it open, you can flip this down like this, right? Good, and now while you're holding the bag or it's slung over one shoulder, you have to kind of fight. Actually, that one wasn't too bad, but I guess maybe because I had it against the table, but I have often had a situation where like, if I have the bag flip open all the way and I'm holding it now, I can't zip it up. I have to set it down, set it down like this, you know, use one hand, bring this up and then close the main bag. And for me, this friction is really annoying and I feel it's a little bit sad because it takes what could have been a really great access experience, because again, it's super easy to rip it open, you know, and get into just deeply into the content of this bag, and then just mars it by making it difficult to close. So, mm, not the end of the world, but 
Also, you know, when your name is the civic half zip 22, where your access method is part of the reason for being for your bag, I guess we'd want the experience to be great on both ends. Anyway, so that having been said, we've got the bag open and you can see here, there's uh, an interior top pocket. And this pocket is the only internal real organization other than the laptop compartment. And it is also a dump style pocket. So inside I have like a toothbrush, uh, some coin pouch, uh, some chapstick, alcohol, pen, highlighter, uh, flashlight, little EDC doohickey, and uh, like some AirPods, and that's really it. I like this pocket a lot in that it has its own dimension, you can see here. Uh, let's see, it has its own dimension, and it has, you know, kind of like floats freely, so you can quite overstuff it a bit. You have, you know, expansion in both directions here, and it's very easy to use as a dump pouch, similar to this top yoke pocket. Like, it's very easy just to take things in and dump them in there, and it's easy to see and access them right away because the zipper is up at the top here. Again, if we take the common use case where you've kind of got the bag hanging down a little bit, it's easy to kind of just get into there like this. You can kind of at eye level look down, see a bunch of stuff, see what you've got inside of there like this, and then, you know, just zip it up and you are done like this. Now, there is a downside to this, however, which is the duckbill. And this is where the duckbill is coming from because it contains all this weight up here. And then this just the thin panel at the bottom, it creates the natural kind of, you know, protruding front area here. And beyond just looking really ugly, like there's no way to avoid it other than not putting stuff in there. And even if you don't put stuff in there, it still will sometimes naturally form a duck bill. So if we take things out like this, um, you know, so we don't have anything in there, you can already see just due to the shaping of this line and everything, it still kind of gives you a little bit of a, gives you a little bit of a duck bill, even without that, you, know, you can see. And honestly, because there is no real other organization inside of this bag, save the laptop compartment, um, you really are gonna have to use this um, duck bill top dump pouch. So, the other problem with the duck bill comes in in that it forms like a sort of natural choke point, which I alluded to a couple times when it comes to this bag. So we'll get to that here in a moment, but first let's start with what I've got loaded in here. Like I said, I just came back from a trip, a couple days trip with this bag. So we've got uh, a Peak Design medium packing cube with some stuff inside of it, some clothes uh, inside of it. I've got a Leica Q2 in there. Uh, I've got just some masks and a little pouch there. Uh, spare USB battery, a couple of charging cables, etc. I've got a really minimal dot kit inside of a North Face Glam uh, pouch. I've got a hair iron because you got to look good or else it don't matter. I've got a Bellroy note taker and a pen. And I've got another North Face uh, Glam pouch with just my electronics and such. And that's really it. And you can already see there's this really big central capacity in the bottom of this bag. And that's what I think makes this bag hold a surprising amount of stuff for the size and gives it a pretty good capacity to size or capacity to volume ratio. The material is a little bit heavier, but it's not super heavy. So actually this bag, I think is one of the better bags when it comes to holding a bunch of stuff for a relatively light weight. And then when you consider a lot of the weight goes to like the really nice suspension system, it actually is a pretty good trade-off. And that's one of the reasons why I think this bag works well across multiple scenarios like outdoor hiking, travel, uh, EDC, etc. Now, I've talked about this choke point a couple times here, so let's get into it. So you can see here that the bag does narrow a little bit thanks to the front duck bill thing here. And there's and where the zipper line is, like we can't, you know, quite, like it kind of narrows a bit. But then when you get down to the bottom, there's, you can see it goes back up like this. So once you can fit things past here, you can actually fill out more stuff at the bottom of this bag than in the choke point. Now, what that means is that sometimes you're gonna have a hard time using this bag effectively if you've got some really big things like shoes, for example, where the width is sort of fixed um, and you just kind of have to fit them past this choke point. So even if they could fit down here or even if they could technically fit in here, it's kind of hard to wrestle them in and out. Anyway, the other kind of um, annoying thing is like when you've got this bag, again, loaded out here, let's throw some stuff in here. I will say, before I get to the annoying thing, look at how easy it is to load this bag. I love this part of the bag. Like once you actually get it open, 
you know, or you can get it open easily. It's easy to throw things in and out. It's just, again, the zipping that's a little bit frictionful, but you have this bit of a choke point of restriction thanks to the front duck bill area. And then you also have the inside of the yoke pouch, which I mentioned before, which kind of overhangs. And that makes access to the laptop compartment really surprisingly difficult, much harder than it needs to be. This is the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So it actually fits in there. You can kind of, you can see I already have one hand kind of pulling back the yoke and then kind of just force it in here. But if you had a larger laptop, like a 16 inch, it's gonna get caught. Even now this sometimes, if you're not careful, gets caught underneath this yoke pocket, inside a yoke pocket, and it's hard to get it in and out. Um, for me, that was an annoying friction that again, partially as a result of this hanging, intruding yoke pocket and partially as a result of the duckbill internal, you know, kind of constriction that I think could have been avoided um, and is unfortunate in terms of like friction of access. This front, uh, sorry, excuse me, front, um, this internal laptop compartment also is where you would put the hydration bladder and then just run it, the hose out through here if you were going to rock this with a hydration bladder. Um, final thing to mention on the inside here are these loops here. Now, Evergood says that you can clip things to there with carabiners, kind of like a crag pack or like a rope pack um, or like put a pen through there or a knife or something through there. I've never really found a use for these because I just, I don't know, I don't have the right size pens and I'm not carrying things that I carabiner to the inside of my bag. Um, but they're there. I wish that there were another internal organization pocket in lieu of those straps. But anyway, that is really it for this pack. And so if you're in the market for a bag like this, what are some other bags that you might want to consider? Well, first and foremost, the um, Mystery Ranch Urban Assault 24. And there's a variety of urban assaults in different sizes here. Um, I think that this bag is very similar to the half zip in that it does kind of give you, if you don't do the tri, if you don't do the uh, tri zip completely, it gives you that same kind of like top loading, opening type of central main compartment with good rippability. You can see robust materials, very similar materials, side water bottle pockets on both sides there. Good harness. Um, this one has load lifters, which Mr. Ranch doesn't do, but it'll kind of give you the same kind of high and tight kind of load. Um, kind of nice curved, uh, sorry, um, sorry, fits kind of nice and curved to your back, although this frame sheet isn't as stiff on this one as it is on this one. And then an external laptop compartment, um, which, I, and actually like a little tablet compartment here, so which I think is actually like a better addition in terms of access than this bag here. Um, oh, sorry, also they do have this top dump pouch here at the top. So again, kind of a different take, similar purpose as like the yoke pouch. So this one comes in a variety of colors, um, has a pretty good capacity, again, 24 liters versus 22, though some of that is to this external laptop compartment carry and a lot of similar feature sets and materials, robust quality, very good option to consider. If you are maybe looking for something a little bit more high tech or you're carrying more like gear or you're much more on the civic urban city side of it, then the outdoorsy side of it, you might want to consider the North Face Access Pack. There's a variety of generations and models of this. Its main party trick is this cool little automatic opening, a uh, little spring-loaded top. Again, very similar top loading type of bag, almost exactly. You can see like not a half zip, but a half opening bag, um, vertical orientation, good central capacity here, though it is smaller overall because it's got, it's more, it's like a harder framed bag. Like it's just harder to cram stuff in here than it is in here. It has a surprisingly smaller capacity than you would expect for the size and shape, whereas this one has a surprisingly larger capacity for the size and the shape. Much kind of more urban looking. You also though, again, get similar feature sets, right? Two dual water, uh, two dual mesh water bottle pockets on the outside. Um, actually a front, slash pocket, which is something I wish this bag had. Superior internal organization, as you can see, and a separate external laptop carry compartment with this little thing that you can use to pull up to get your laptop out. Um, pretty cool bag. And again, access being in the name, both access in and out is a lot easier than this bag. Though obviously I wouldn't carry this North Face bag for any kind of outdoorsy adventures. And finally, while, and finally, while 
maybe not quite in the same exact category. Um, this is the Arcteryx Aero 22. There's a variety of these bags out there. Um, this bag is very popular in the Japanese streetwear scene and a couple of other streetwear zines. It is kind of technically a half zip opening bag. You can see it does kind of half zip open. Um, it has slightly more organization than the Evergoods on the inside. Um, it's a more urban-ish oriented bag, but you can also do outdoor hiking with this, day hiking with this, which I'll talk about in a second here. Um, I think that it, no, I think, I mean, it does hold a lot less in this main compartment due to the construction than this one. Um, but it does, you know, maybe because it is sort of all in this central compartment, it does maybe hold more than like a traditional day pack, which is several different compartments here. In terms of the feature set, you have this relatively shallow, actually kind of just disappointingly shallow water bottle pocket here that's really more for looks than anything. The water bottles tend to fall out of it. The elastic is weak. On the other side, you have sort of like a Velcro pocket here where you can put something with a mesh, weirdly. You can sort of use it as a water bottle pocket. It's more for, I guess, you know, things that you don't want to fall out. Um, and then you have this nice front kangaroo pocket, which I think is sort of interesting. Um, and I think that this bag actually can be used, as I mentioned, for outdoorsy kind of, you know, endeavors, um, day hikes. So you can't carry that much stuff in it, but it's not, you know, too, too bad. Flexible frame sheet, but it does kind of like ride up a little bit higher and tighter. There are um, load lifters here that'll help cinch you close to your back. Um, and there's also like an ineffectual thin and removable waist belt. Um, like I said, this bag is very, oh, sorry, and then, you know, straps with sternum strap everything a little bit more overbuilt than this one, but these are just more functional, but this do the job just fine. So, oh, and also a water bottle, sorry, sorry, a hydration hose pass, pass through here. Like I said, this bag is, I think more for looks, but it does actually do okay for like, you know, outdoor hiking and as a sort of crossover city EDC pack. Anyway, that having been said, um, if you have any questions about this bag, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Or if you have any bags you would like me to review, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And if I own them, I will review them. Thank you very much. So sad. Such a sad bag. Anyway.